Welcome back to the Seaboard Central, everyone. What you're looking at here is the sister to my other GP15-1, who's just showed up on the property. It's another Atherin Genesis unit that I have added a ESU low sound decoder to. Now I prefer ESU decoders for all of my locomotives on the Seaboard Central. And uh, for these Atherin Genesis units, I've been installing these 58921 decoders which fit right in and they have the built-in current keepers already added to them. So you don't have to add a separate power pack or keep alive. This one has it built in. And even though I cannot stand to do decoder installs myself, these were simple enough that I could actually do it. Along with that ESU decoder, I added a drop-in scale sound system speaker. So let's see how she sounds. That chirping noise that you hear on this particular sound file is a smart start system, which is designed to shut the engine down if it sits in idle long, for, for a period of time in an effort to conserve fuel. All right, to program my units, I use this ESU LOC programmer, and it's uh, connected to a programming track that I put the locomotive on and I use that to, uh, the programmer itself is connected to an old laptop that I keep just for this purpose. So one of the first things you wanna do is uh, go to the ESU Loke Sound website, go to downloads and update that Loke programmer to have the latest software and I just did that one uh, as of today it's version 5.2.2 and so my uh, LOC programmer has been updated with the latest software. All right for the sound files you can go back to this one Click on sound files and we're going to go with the Loke Sound 5 family since this one has a V5 decoder in it. I'm going to click on North American and Australian sound files and here I can just search, let's just search GP15 and see what comes up. Alright, so I have a a GP15 has a 12-cylinder 645 engine in it. The, this one is a non-turbo with two exhaust. So here's one sound file. Here's another one that uh, also works for an SW1500 or an MP15. And this particular unit, I have this uh, particular sound file, which is the 12-cylinder 645E, two exhaust, non-turbo, third edition. So you uh, download this sound file on your computer. Right, since I've already uploaded this sound file on this, in this locomotive, I've just pulled up my LOC programmer on my laptop. And this is the first screen that comes up. And so we'll just select modify the settings to this particular decoder. And what's going to happen, it's going to read what's on the decoder and it's going to come back to us with the current decoder settings. Here I've got it programmed to the long address, uh, unit 426. And for my function map purposes, I want these particular functions to operate together in the consist. And I'll show you on the function map later, but right here I have function five, six, seven, and eight will all work simultaneously if this unit is consisted with another locomotive. Let's go down to brake settings. And on my brake settings, I go to the bottom. For brake one, I've got it set at 51, brake two at 85, and brake three at 102. 
and those are the percentages. And I did this to get realistic settings of how a real locomotive stops based on what I've used on the prototype. Next up is driving characteristics. I set the acceleration to 28 or 25 seconds, and I set the deceleration to 255 max, all the way max. This allows me to, uh, the engine to coast, and I can utilize that brake function. Now onto the function map. So for the function map settings, I wanna ignore the direction for uh, the headlights, so it doesn't matter which direction the locomotive is going, I want that headlight to be on. on. That way I can display the headlight dim on both ends of the unit, regardless of which direction it's moving. So to do that, you just click here and you ignore the direction. Another thing to make this uh, work good with my proto throttle, I have the front headlight set to F0 and I have the rear headlight set to F10. Here are some of the other features. Um, F1 is bell, F2 is horn, F3 is the front dimmer, F4 are the front ditch lights. I put drive hold on F number five. I put all three brakes on F6. This is an independent brake feature. This what I've seen works really good with the proto throttle and, and stopping this unit prototypically. F7, since this unit is not, normally I put uh, dynamic brakes on F7, but since this unit is not equipped with dynamic brake, I put that flange squeal on here. F8 turns the sound on and off, and it has a whole lot of things going on with F8. F9, I put the coupler crash. Like I said, F10 is the rear headlight, F11 is rear headlight dimmer, and F12 are rear ditch lights. All right, next up, function outputs. This is where you program the uh, headlights and the ditch lights and their brightness. I choose uh, a brightness, uh, I lower it down to 20. This allows that dimmer feature to work. So there's your front light and your rear light. Um, and um, auxiliary one and two, three and four go for the ditch lights. So one and two, the front ditch lights, three and four are those rear ditch lights. Now function settings. I changed this uh, triggered function to F13. And if you go back to function map F13, I've got now is a short, a short air let off. All right, a uh, big one, motor settings. That's... Okay, I use this, click use the speed curve. And here is what we'll go over today. This is gonna be a yard unit. I want the speed to max out at 12 miles per hour. I don't want this locomotive to go any faster than 12 scale miles per hour because it's gonna stay in the yard. Maximum speed on yard tracks is 10 miles an hour. So why do I need this unit to go any faster? 12 is certainly fast enough. So the first thing I need to do is figure out the minimum speed to get the locomotive to go one miles per hour in speed step one and the maximum speed to go 12 miles per hour. And I want the 12 miles per hour um, to be um, through the, when it's maxed out. And I'll show you these settings here. So this right here is speed step one, speed step two, speed step three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So by the time it gets to speed step 10, it's gonna be maxed out at 12 miles per hour. And I'll show you how I figure out these settings because it's gonna vary depending on the decoder in the unit. Let's just go through uh, here real quickly the sound settings. I, I've got the master volume down to 64. Sound slot settings. I want uh, 
the uh, horn to be the loudest, so I got that maxed out. I lowered the uh, flange squeal down to 40 and the bell down to 60. So something I highly recommend is keeping good notes on all of your sound files for all of your locomotives. And here I've got a, a spiral bound notebook. I keep one for all of my locomotives that I've done. And here's one for this particular unit. And I, I put the sound file number and the name for it. Our maximum speed, 12 miles per hour. And my goal is to stop the unit and it takes four seconds at 10 miles per hour. And that's typical what happens with a real locomotive unless you're coupled to a lot of weight, a lot of cars, it takes, obviously it take longer, but running light engines, running at 10 miles an hour, if you jam the engine brake on, it takes about four seconds. So to get that, um, there's those brake settings, brake 151, 285, and three is 102. Also listed those driving characteristics, acceleration value 28, deceleration value 255. Motor settings, to get that minimum speed, this one's been adjusted to four and the max has been adjusted to 32. So here's each speed step. Here and here are the current values for this particular unit. And this is what speeds I was able to achieve out of them. And here are my goals for each speed step. So the settings on this unit, I'm, um, I'm a little bit faster, but it's really close on each one of these. Some of these I could actually adjust, um, but for right now, like that one particular, 8.2 and there's 7.6. So I probably need to uh, lower this number to get this closer to this, this setting. But what I'm really after are these particular are these particular speeds on using the proto throttle? So there's eight notches on the throat, just like a real throttle on a real locomotive. Notch one, my goal is 2.5 miles per hour. Notch two is five miles per hour. Three is 8.5. Four is 10. And five through eight on this particular unit is is 12. On my road units, I'll actually get it up to 18 miles per hour. So you'll see 12, 14, 16, and 18. Yard, max, the, max it out. You're not going to get any faster than 12. Here's some more notes. The master volume is 64, horn 255, bell 60, flange squeal 40, and those headlights adjusted to 20. All right, so... These are fairly close, but speed step five and six could actually be adjusted down. So let's drop these figures down and see if, what kind of difference they make. First, we'll try to drop it down to from 130 to 129 and 160 to 159. And to do that, we go up to speed step five and six, there's five, and we can lower that down to 129. Well, let's just, I tell you what, let's go to 128. And the next one, we'll drop it down to 159 for speed step number six. All right, to save this, We'll go up to this particular tab right here, and we're going to override it. Click Next, and it's going to save it to the locomotive. All right, just to check, we'll go to Driver's Cab. We'll click on Go. If the sound comes on, we know it works. Well, it works. All right, with the unit on the layout, we're gonna to go to speed step number five. We're gonna check the speed using an AccuTrack 
speed on them. And what we're shooting for is that 6.2 number. Six point seven. Looks like we need to come down some more. So here are my final adjustments that I made to get some speeds very similar to my goals. So speed step one is obviously one. Speed step two, I've got it thirty-two. Speed step three, I've got it sixty-four. Four at ninety-two. Five at one nineteen. Six at one fifty. 7 at 185, 8 at 210, 9 at 230, and then 10 at 255. Now, what does that give me? By lowering it down to 32, I've dropped it to 2.5. This one down to 64 has brought it to 3.9. All these are very close. 92 gives me 5.1. 119 got... 6.3, 150 is 7.7, .7, 185 is 9.2. You can see they're very close to my goal. And when it gets this close, that's close enough. They're definitely going to be speed matched to the other unit. Just to compare it with the other unit, this is the 427 GP15, and there's the settings for it and what it gave me, with the exception of this one, which I'd need to adjust down. The rest of these are are very close to these. And this, uh, how I figured this was on that Atlas MP15 switcher. So all three units will be speed matched together. And one of the last things I want to do is go up to file. I want to save this project. I've got it under GMTX 426. I'm going to replace the file that I have in there since I made these changes. And so we're good to go now. All right, here's the final product. As you can see, the headlights on bright. Function three should dim it. All right, let's go to speed step number eight and get 10 miles per hour off of it. Out of 10, we'll kill the power, hit F6, 1, 2, 3, 4, just like a real one. All right, just to verify everything with the prototrottle, dim, bright, bright with ditch lights, the rear on dim as well. Notch four should give us 10 miles per hour. Yep. All right, we go to idle. Apply the brake. One, two, three. Four. and that's it so i hope you've enjoyed this episode of the seaborn central be sure to tune in next week for the monthly layout update so until next time thanks for watching and happy model railroading everybody